Hi everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical. Today we're continuing our series on neuromodulators, focusing on the glabella, how to get rid of those pesky leavens, and how to treat this properly without causing the dreaded eyelid ptosis. Let's get into it. All right, so let's begin. Nothing serious, a little bit of basic anatomy. We have three muscles that cause the frown, which are one, the procerus, and that's right in the middle. Whenever we frown, it goes down. When we relax, it goes up, and it causes a line that goes horizontally right in the middle here. And also when we frown, we have the two corrugators that go in whenever we flex and go out whenever we relax. And some people, whenever we flex, it goes not only in, but it goes in and down. And when they relax, they go up and out. The main importance is understanding where is the belly of the muscle? Where is the meat of the muscle? That's where you should be placing most of your neuromodulator, right? So the belly of the procerus is going to be at the origin, and the origin is where it inserts into the bone, and that's going to be at the base here. And then as it inserts into the muscle, it becomes more superficial. So if I place neuromodulator here, a lot of the product's probably going to blend into the frontalis, and this muscle, whenever it relaxes, goes down. As your eyebrows to kind of look angry and weird later on, so we definitely don't want to do that. We want to place most of it at the belly, which is just below the eyebrow line, right here. The corrugators, the origin where it sticks into the bone is right here. And then the insertion where it becomes more superficial and it inserts into the skin is right here. You can tell based on a little dimple. Some people have something called a depressor supercilli. Now, the reason why this is important to differentiate is because some people, whenever they frown, you literally be able to see the muscle start and stop right here. And only this part moves. Look at my, fr my corrugators. They really don't extend beyond here. This is the belly of my muscle. But sometimes you'll have clients come in and when they frown, it goes all the way down to here and you'll see this whole ridge frown and pull down this way. In those cases, I might even do an extra point. I might go right in here to make sure I'm really tacking that depressor supercilli. I may place a few units here. And then after that, I may move up here and that will be my second injection, which is actually the first injection for this person. This person did not have depressor supercilli action. They had normal corrugator action. So I'm just gonna do my first injection there. And then as I move laterally, I wanna go a little bit more superficially with my needle. And the reason why is because as I go laterally, that corrugator thins out and becomes more superficial. Right up until the insertion point, which is right where that tail is. Now it's extremely superficial and extremely thin. So I have to keep that in mind. If I go too deep whenever I'm medial here, I'm likely going to A, miss some of the muscle, I'm gonna go underneath it, and there's an infraorbital or superorbital notch that's here that potentially can have that product seep into maybe hitting the levator. Pop quiz, how many muscles are attached to the tails of the corrugator? It actually is composed of three muscle groups. We have the corrugator, which is the main one, and then it actually connects with the frontalis as well, and we also have the obicularis oculi. Now, if that's the case, if I place product here because I have the frontalis, am I worried that it's going to drop the eyebrow? No, why? It's because the corrugator and the obicularis oculi, both when they contract, go in, but when they relax, they go out. And those two muscle groups are stronger than the frontalis, and it's going to support that unit. Injecting straight in versus angling the needle. Is there a difference? Have two major arteries here. You have the supratrochlear and supraorbital arteries. If you're going straight in and straight in, then it covers less surface area compared to on an angle, on an angle, you're kind of asking to hit an artery whenever you're doing so. And by the way, if you've placed product where you've, let's say, poked an artery, and now you have to put pressure on it, sometimes that pressure can cause that product to spread, and guess where it might spread to? The levator muscle, and this might be a reason why some people are getting eyelidtosis. Now when I'm dealing with the lateral aspect of the muscle, this is where that straight on approach is really going to help me. First of all, I have to be careful and mindful of the tail of the eyebrow. If I go in from an angle, I might be underneath that tail and I might cause an eyelidtosis. I might just be missing the the corrugator altogether because it's extremely thin there. Now the last tip is the one centimeter rule, which I think a lot of people get wrong. And the reason why is because we are told you have to inject one centimeter above the orbital rim. But where is the orbital rim? Is it right around here? 
this is actually the top of the orbital bone. It's not the beginning of the orbital rim. The beginning of the orbital rim is at your eyelash line or the tarsal fold right here. This is the beginning of the orbital rim and you need to be one centimeter higher than that. So let's take this out. This is my orbital rim. We're gonna go one centimeter higher and this is going to be in my eyebrow. I need to be just on top of that for safety and this is where your corrugator is. Often enough, people will use the eyebrow as the orbital rim marking and they will go one centimeter higher and they're going to be into the frontalis, just missing the corrugator to err on the side of safety and all that does is what? Drops your eyebrow. So make sure you're in the belly of the muscle, look at the muscle and inject deep into that and you'll be fine. Okay, so let's do a quick recap here with Carla and what we're seeing is the Procerus runs deep, the belly of the muscles underneath the eyebrow line. So we're gonna go deep here. We're gonna place our four units here. Then we're going to measure from the orbital rim, which starts here one centimeter up. We need to be just above that. So when they frown, we wanna feel the muscle and this is usually where the belly is. We're going to place another four units deep here. Now we're moving laterally. So I'm going to inject this a little bit more superficially, maybe three or four units right here. I'm going to break the skin and go three millimeters deep, placing my product here. If I've decided to place three units here, then I can go ahead and place the last unit very superficially inside that little tail right here. And I wanna be on the inside of the tail, very superficially, one unit intradermally and I'm good to go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next one where we cover the crows. I'm gonna show you how to help treat an asymmetrical eyebrow and how to prevent shelving. Until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers.